The business motherfucker. The Daily Read. Your source for news, politics, sports, and all things trending. Here's your host, Marcus Gentry. Silicon Valley Bank is no more. And in the last 24 hours, many founders, investors that I've talked to have been desperately trying to get their money out. Our banking system is in, is in a fundamentally different place than it was you know, a decade ago. And the economists are now asking if Fed will hit pause on further rate increases. The question now, though, is whether the collapse of this tech-friendly regional bank is the start of something more serious, or just what happens when higher interest rates give companies less room for error. Welcome to the Daily Read and I am your host Marcus Gentry. Today we're going to talk about these banks crashing and how it relates to the 2008 financial crash. The main thing I want to say to you guys is don't panic. Okay? The first financial crash is something we have to discuss in relation to this because it's, it's, it's relevant this is this is why I don't think that we're gonna have a total meltdown number one the first financial crash happened because of the housing market we had a meltdown in the housing market they were giving out loans to get houses to people who really couldn't afford it and when the banks went to collect on the debts that these people owed they repoed the houses so you're using people's money let me let me let me let me go back and explain to you how this works the banks get your money okay and they use your money that they're holding for you to make more money for them part of that money that they supposed to make is by loaning people money to buy homes cars and things of that nature the problem is back in 2008 they was just giving out loans for houses not for a lot of minorities mind you but they were giving out these loans these low income loans people didn't have the uh, the credit to even get a house was getting houses you see it all the time people that you went to high school with pop up with a house you like you know that you, you, you're saying to yourself wow you know this is a good move but they really couldn't afford it they couldn't even afford to rent where they were staying but they just so happened to have decent credit and the creditors was giving out loans for houses left and right so when the when the housing market crashed and the banks went to go collect the money for these houses that they was loaning other people's money out they had to repossess the houses so when people started going to these banks to get their money the banks didn't have money they had property and it was a domino effect and so the banks started collapsing so that's basically 2008's financial crash that's how it happened and this is different I just want y'all to understand that this is something that's different this is not the same thing okay a lot of people uh, are on pins and needles and they're, they're causing a skittish panic and all of this is because of an influencer he's a, a financial influencer who does blogs YouTube channels he does a lot of things but you wouldn't even know this guy's name because he rotates in millionaire circles and there's been a lot of uh, fake news what Trump calls fake news there's been a lot of things going on with the Republicans and 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 they're basically scaring people into voting Republican and how they're scaring people is by banks are woke schools are woke they don't they can't even define what woke means and some of these rich people they vote Republican because Republicans give tax cuts to the wealthy 
so when these bloggers that blog post out to the uh, to the some of America's wealthiest people America's wealthiest people are turning around and running to get their money out the bank because a financial profit I call them financial profits these doom and gloom people the housing market is going to crash this is next going to happen uh, 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 socialism America is, is turning into a socialist country these doom and gloom people are scaring these multi-millionaires and billionaires and they're running down there trying to get their money out the banks and it's causing other people to panic but it goes a little deeper than that too when it comes down to these Silicon Valley like the Silicon Valley Bank it's a whole story behind that some of these banks that are crashing I'm going to explain to you what's happening with them which is different from the 2008 financial crash but let's go a little bit more into the 2008 listen to this the midtown manhattan headquarters of lehman brothers whose collapse 10 years ago this week was the signal event of the 2008 financial crisis it started in real estate and it started with subprime and that's the story everyone knows how does that crisis in the suburbs of america um, move all the way back to the center of finance uh, in New York. See, I just explained to you exactly what he just said. The first financial crash happened because the banks are businesses. They're businesses. They get your money to hold for them and they turn around and use your money by giving it to other people to use for cars, business, startups, uh, houses, whatever they need to use it for. The problem is the banks was just giving out money willy-nilly to people who couldn't afford these houses. And when the banks went to collect, they didn't have the money to pay them so they repoed these houses. So now you got all this property that you done bought with these people's money and you don't have any money to give back to these people that, that, that gave you the money to hold for them okay that's this is how the first financial crash happened that's not what's going on right now everybody knows about Bitcoin Bitcoin is uh, I call it if if the real money it's fake money it's digital money digital currency and you can do a lot with digital currency that's secretive you can transfer digital currency around the world in secret they have what you call the dark web uh, the deep web there are places on the deep web and the dark web that you can purchase stuff that really you can't find anywhere in the world but you gotta use digital currency and the reason why is because it's hard to track this stuff down so a lot of people was investing in digital currencies they was investing in tech startups and all kinds of technology because technology is running America and the world so now we move up to the day and what's going on with this financial crash listen to this are a risky bet in the best of times but when interest rates start creeping up they get even riskier interest rates represent the cost of borrowing money and fast-growing tech companies need to borrow a lot of money to keep growing and in some cases to stay alive before their business models can start turning a profit and with the Fed hiking interest rates in order to fight inflation, that means riskier areas of the financial system, like crypto and tech, are prone to getting hit the hardest. Crypto and tech. That's what everybody uses on their phones, their, their technology on their phones. People are building apps to make your life easier. All of these are companies. Whenever you pick up your phone and start playing your favorite game, we talked about this on the last show apps are the way of the future this is what you call residual income and everybody's getting into it you know I'm trying to get into it early before the, 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 the market is oversaturated 
because you want to have your apps out there that people already know about so when somebody comes along and put their apps out there that's similar to yours they're gonna go to yours first because they used they're used to what's what you have so it's always better to get in early on the market than, than come in late even though apps have been around a while only the techiest of people uses them or or, or builds them so so now all of these tech startup companies are basically folding because guess what the market is starting to get saturated so now if the market saturated and all of this money is going into these companies and these companies aren't getting any business because there's so many other tech companies out here then it's causing a financial crisis but all of the but, but that's not but that's not the only thing that's causing this okay I'm, I'm, I want to make that clear that's not the only thing that's causing this financial crisis another thing causing the financial crisis some of these banks are uh, I want to say uppity they're uppity like Silicon Valley Bank these banks are bankers that only mess with millionaires and billionaires these are the ones that's crashing okay the banks that you and I would go to the Wells Fargo's the USA banks they're not crashing because they have more money flowing in I'm going to explain that when we come back off this first break the business motherfucker the daily read the business motherfucker the daily read Clients needed cash to shore up their books because of high interest rates, so they started withdrawing money at Silicon Valley Bank. At the same time, Silicon Valley Bank's reserves were also vulnerable to interest rates. The bank's reserves were mostly backed by U.S. government bonds that SVB... Okay. The first part of the show, we talked about the 2008 crash and how it's different from what's going on now. I'm going to reiterate for those of you who are just tuning in to this podcast. The 2008 crash, again, was because of the housing bubble that burst. This financial crash is due to a few things. Number one, tech companies are being oversaturated. Everybody's getting into tech because everybody wants to have the lifestyle to have money coming into their bank accounts where they don't have to do nothing just sit back and watch their bank accounts grow it's called residual income so you got people out here who are jumping into the tech field they're jumping into the apps they're jumping into the Bitcoin they're doing everything they can to make their lives easier and make money while they sleep okay but the thing about it is the, 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 the system is getting oversaturated. So now some of these tech companies are going under and they can't pay back the money that they get from these banks. That's the first reason why this is happening. The second reason why this is happening is inflation. Okay. Now the inflation that the government is putting on uh, the raising of the uh, They're trying, to, they're trying to raise the, the, the amount of money that you can charge back on a, on a, on a lender. Okay, say, say you go and um, borrow $1,000. You have to pay back $1,500 on $1,000. Okay, it's being raised slightly to maybe... 1700 you have to pay back and it's scaring a lot of people 
okay? It's scaring a lot of people. People aren't used to that because we just came out of a pandemic. And when you're coming out of a pandemic, you can't raise prices on people like that. So it's panic. People are panicking. So number one, you got tech companies are failing. Number two, inflation. And then this is a this is another reason why this is happening. Banks are businesses, people. Okay? Banks are businesses. They get your money to hold for you, but they have to turn around and use that money to make more money. Okay? The problem that's happening with these multi-million millionaire banks, they're not loaning the money. They're sitting on it. Number one, they're scared because of the last crisis. We just had a, 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 a financial crisis in 2008. And then on top of that, we just came out of a pandemic. So a lot of these multi-millionaire banks that most of the rich stars and, and, and the musicians bank with, they're not loaning the money out. They're scared. But scared money can't make money. That's an old street terminology. Scared money can't make money. So when these banks like Silicon Valley Bank are sitting on this money, they're not making money. They're just basically holding rich people's money because they're scared to use it. But you got other banks like Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and so on and so forth. These banks are back in business. They're they're utilizing this money, and their and their revenues are coming back. Listen to this. One day after a thirty billion dollar Lifeline boosted its beleaguered shares, First Republic Bank saw its stock price plummet more than twenty five percent on Friday, with trading temporarily halted as new information finances reignited investors' fears of a broader banking crisis. First Republic's Friday stock plunge came after the San Francisco lender said it was suspending dividend payments to its shareholders. It also disclosed recent changes to its balance sheet, including a more than $100 billion loan from the U.S. Federal Reserve, that one analyst described to Reuters as, quote, staggering and painting a very dire outlook for the bank and its shareholders. First Republic's roller coaster ride began earlier in the week when investors feared it may be the next to fall after the collapse of SVB Financial and Signature Bank. Okay. First Republic, Signature Bank, SVB Bank. Who do you know bank at these places? These are multi millionaire bankers and banks. These are where the stars and the millionaires and the billionaires put their money. You very rarely see big name people put their money in a Wells Fargo account. Wells Fargo is like middle of the road for people who got maybe a million or less. Sometimes 10 million or less. But these major companies that you've seen that are folding, these are the banks that are just sitting on the money and they're not making money. That's why they're collapsing. They got to pay their workers, so they got to use the money that people are holding, they're holding for other people to pay their bankers, to pay this, to pay that, but their revenue is not coming in. They have to pay their shareholders, but the revenue is not coming in. And then you have an influencer who's basically an influencer for the stars. You know, he does something like what we do on, on YouTube and, 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 and uh, you know, he he's an influencer. But the stars listen to him because they, I guess he, he knows about the financials. He knows about the stocks. But the problem is he's panicking people. That's how all this started. It started with a blogger. He done went out here... I'm going to push pause on this uh, audio. I have a motor outside that's running. And we'll be back. Alright, we're back you guys. Uh, I can't help that motor. 
it's going to be a loud one. So, I'm going to see if I can talk over the motor. You have to excuse me. I'm pretty sure you guys can hear my voice. But, again, as I said, the financial institutions that are shutting down right now are basically financial institutions to the stars. Financial institutions to multi-millionaires and billionaires. The people that live in the, in the, in the big castles behind the pearly gates they're not making money and the only people that they're investing in is tech startups they're not they're, you couldn't go on one of these banks and get a loan it's not gonna happen you might go to Wells Fargo and get a loan but you're not gonna go on one of these banks and get a loan and that's why they're losing money that's why they're shutting down but what's happening now is more people that invest their money and put their money in other banks are panicking too so the best thing to do is don't panic some of these banks that are folding smaller institutions like the ones that we bank at have pitched in to help prop these banks up think about that I mean seriously you got these wealthy banks that are folding and all the middle of the road banks they're doing good they're, they're okay they've pitched in money to prop some of these uh, millionaire and billionaire banks up but they're doing it because they don't want the government to do it the government has already given out a bailout. It was a big thing about that. Uh, citizens was panicking, mad. The Tea Party got started. And the Tea Party, when it got started, it got started because of the financial crisis and the bank bailout. And then the whole Tea Party thing moved over into what we have today in the Republican Party. This motor is getting irritating, people. I'm finna go on and wrap this show up, and uh, I'm gonna move that. I'm gonna move that motor for the next show. Big banks, including J.P. Morgan Chase and Morgan Stanley, stepped in with the $30 billion lifeline in a deal that was put together by power brokers, including J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell, and U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. Our banking system is sound. The renewed fears of a First Republic collapse came even after Yellen on Thursday assured lawmakers that the U.S. banking system was sound. But what a difference a day makes, with other embroiled banks on Friday also making news. SVB, whose former unit Silicon Valley Bank was taken over by U.S. regulators, said on Friday it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection to seek buyers for its assets. And Credit Suisse shares came under renewed pressure despite the bank having secured an emergency loan of up to $54 billion from the Swiss National Bank. Renewed worries about the sector sank other bank stocks Friday and helped drag down Wall Street's main indexes. Fed data showed that banks sought a record $152.9 billion in emergency liquidity from the Federal Reserve over recent days, surpassing the previous high that was set during the most acute phase of the 2008 financial crisis. I'm going to end the show. Like I said, this motor is getting it's agitating me. And uh, the next show we do, I'm going to make sure that I move that uh, farther away. But I just want to let you know that if you're, if you're concerned about your particular bank crashing, don't worry too much about it. The normal banks that normal people bank at are sound. People are just panicking right now. The millionaire and billionaire banks those are the ones that are crashing they're scared to use these people's money millionaires and billionaires already done told these bankers that they don't want their money being loaned out to, uh, to people who are not going to return it you know it is it, all, all of us connected you know if you put 10 million dollars in a, in, a, in, a, in a person's bank 
they're going to they're gonna look at you as a valued customer and they're scared to use your money but if you don't use the money and the bank is a business the bank can't make money if the bank can't make money they're pinching off of these people's money that's in the bank because they have to use some type of money to do things with it's all a cycle but we're going to end today's show this is the daily read and i'm out the business motherfucker the daily read